joining us now live this morning to talk about COVID impacts here locally in our valley is Deputy Health Officer for the Fresno County Department of Public Health, Dr. Trinidad Solis. Doctor, good morning and thank you for being with us. Yes, good morning. And just tell us, how are our COVID case numbers in Fresno County? Yes, in Fresno County, we are seeing a rise in the number of COVID-19 cases and also hospitalizations due to COVID. Just to give you an example, over the last few days, we received um, uh, close to 900 new positive COVID results. Um, wow. Yeah, and, and in terms of hospitalizations, uh, we saw uh, during June that the number of hospitalizations nearly doubled during the month of June. So it started off at around 90, and uh, towards the end of June, it was close to 180. Um, and because of this, our hospitals in our region are starting to get overwhelmed. Uh, we're seeing a delay in um, the, the response, like in the waiting rooms and also for ambulances. And that's kind of what we've watched in the past. And those were some of the factors that maybe even enforce future health warnings and regulations when the hospitals just can't handle the patient volume at that point. It's very concerning. How are a majority of the cases, are they more severe or more mild? Or what does it look like when people are getting sick now? Yes, when people are getting sick now, uh, we're seeing symptoms that are similar to other Omicron subvariants, um, and so which means uh, like uh, fever, nasal congestion, sore throat, headaches. Um, and in terms of severity, I do want to clarify that these. Um, cases, rising cases and hospitalizations are being driven by the very contagious Omicron subvariants known as BA4 and BA5. So in terms of your question uh, regarding severity, we're still, um, as scientists and doctors around the world, we're still learning more about that because these are very new uh, uh, subvariants. But in terms of symptoms, as I mentioned, they seem to be similar to other ones. Interesting how we had a story earlier talking about how this virus is just changing pretty fast and now we're seeing as you mentioned these two new uh, would you call them like the newest dominant variants yeah i would uh call claire just to clarify they're um sub variants Got so it. they're they're related to the original omicron uh which uh caused our surge during the winter and so as you mentioned the virus mutated now we have these sub variants known as ba4 and ba5 and um we're very concerned because they appear to be uh, very contagious more than the other sub variants and they tend to have a capacity for reinfection meaning if you've had covid before it's possible to get it again very interesting so it's kind of like almost the second or third generation of the virus. It's like it mutated and then it mutated again. Um, how do cases in the valleys we watch them compare to the rest of the state? Yes, in, in comparison to the rest of the state, um, Fresno County cases are elevated, but so are other counties in California. And to give you an example, the CDC measures um, something called COVID-19 community levels, and it gives a score from low to high. So right now, Fresno County is in the high level, but so are other counties in the Central Valley and the rest of the state. And that means that there's a high level of COVID transmission. And in terms of COVID hospitalizations, uh, Fresno County right now is in the top 10 in terms of the number of highest uh, number of COVID-19 hospitalizations. Okay, thank you, Dr. Solis. And just finally, what are some of the best ways for people to protect themselves as we're seeing these case numbers rise and these really contagious subvariants? How can we stay safe from those? Yeah, so it's very important to uh, stay on top of your vaccines, meaning not only get the COVID vaccine if you haven't already, but also stay up to date with the boosters. Um, we've seen over time that the immunity can wane, and because it, these subvariants are very contagious, it's important to stay up to date on those boosters because they still protect against severe disease like hospitalization and death. Uh, I would also recommend um, to wear a mask and preferably KN95 or N95s in public indoor spaces um, because when you're in an indoor space, the risk of getting infected with COVID is a lot higher compared when you're outside. And also, uh, if you're sick or have symptoms of COVID, stay home uh, and get tested. That way you, you can remove any doubts, uh, whether it's COVID or not, and you don't want to expose uh, other family members or friends. And lastly, I would say right now we're at a new point in the pandemic where we have a lot of good COVID treatments. So if unfortunately, um, you know, you get sick with COVID, uh, we do recommend right now the most effective COVID treatment we have available is called Paxlovid, and it's an oral antiviral pill. So it's a good idea if you're sick, talk with your doctor about Paxlovid. 
Excellent. Very, very good um, just steps for us to follow there on how we can move forward safely as a community and handle this. Dr. Trinidad Solis, thank you so much for joining us bright and early. You were very informative. Thank you. Great. Thank you. All right. Have a great day. Take care and stick with us because we'll be right back after this break.